Hi, this is Amy Godwin with ISME, and I have Dr. Brenda Kays of Guilford Technical Community College with me today. She's Vice President of Student Learning and Success and a current student at Guilford, Thomas Bernard Watkins. Welcome. Thank you, Amy. We're glad to be with you this morning. Brenda, tell me a little bit about Guilford Technical Community College, your uh, uh, membership within Achieving the Dream, and what's going on there now. Hey, I can certainly do that. In fact, that's one of my favorite things to talk about. I think that uh, really it all started for Guilford Tech Community College uh, when we were lucky enough to be chosen to be a member of Achieving the Dream. Uh, that helped us, I think, to move our culture along with regards to a culture of evidence. Prior to that, we relied a lot on the uh, type of anecdotal data that a lot of institutions find themselves using in order to make decisions. But with Achieving the Dream, we were really able to start looking at our data. We established a data warehouse. Uh, we changed the culture to one that actually sought data to make data-informed decisions. And this was a culture change that we saw permeating the entire institution. We saw this, of course, uh, from our Board of Trustees, our President, but this is something that also filtered down to our faculty and staff. What data has been critical in this, in this process? With regards to the Developmental Education Initiative, we've been taking a look at uh, student success. We've also been taking a look at uh, whether or not we can retain students if they persist, both from fall semester spring semester, but also from fall to fall of the following year. So that's been extremely critical for us. In addition to that, we have one of our initiatives that's specifically geared toward advocacy. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking at, we put that initiative into place specifically based on the research that we found that said that the first six weeks of developmental education students' time with the community college is the most critical. And so what we felt is if we could actually establish a connection with the student through our advocacy program, that we would have a better chance of actually retaining the student and then that that student could be successful and not drop out uh, during that first six weeks. So in response to those findings, what, um, what programs or what are you trying to do within those first six weeks? What we're trying to do is we are trying to imprint uh, with the student that there is somebody at the institution that cares about me, that cares if I do show up to class, that cares enough to communicate to me about important dates that are coming out, just to reach out and say, hey, how is everything going? Is there anything that I can help you with? And what we've actually done is we've recruited uh, faculty and staff to participate in this initiative. And we understand and we tell the people who are participating as advocates that we know that you're not going to be a subject matter expert in everything that a student needs. But what we've done is we've made sure that they can get the student to that subject matter expert. Sometimes it can be extremely disconcerting or even frightening for students coming into a college environment. They may be the first person who's ever attended college in their family they can't rely on a mother or a father to kind of shepherd them through the process. So what we've tried to do is we've tried to uh, actually put a person in place that that student can reach out to. Brenda, uh, it sounds very important what happens in the first six weeks. Can you just uh, summarize that again? And I'd love to hear from Thomas about his experience. Absolutely. Um, what we're looking at with regards to that first six weeks and then after that as well. But what we're looking for is we're looking to establish a connection. So a student feels that there's somebody that they can turn to at this institution to ask questions, to seek guidance, and we're hoping that the advocacy program will do just that for students. And um, going on with that, I am, I am about to graduate, but I've already graduated. And right now I'm taking the senior course, and I will be Finishing up with that, I can get my degree. And as far as me attending college, GCCC, I've been here in 
you know, the first couple of weeks is pretty easy going. The process is pretty easy. There are people there that you could talk to and, you know, be able to relate to and, you know, for them to answer questions that you might have had, especially with registering for your classes on time and, you know, making sure that you, where your classes are going to be at. But all these things were taken care of and it was the thanks to the people that were there to try to help and answer the questions that you might have had, especially for being, you know, new, new to the campus. So how many, um, how many folks did help? Did you have um, an advocate and then different faculty members that knew what your programs were? What was the process? Um, well, I can say a, a lot of people, a lot of people was, you know, basically here. It was like everybody. I mean, you could have turned to anybody and pretty much asked, like, where's the AT building or something like that? And they would know where it was and probably direct you and lead you as far as a counselor. I did have a counselor for my first two years. And then after that, I pretty much was easy with the process. I knew what to do after you know, how to register my classes. I pretty much knew the campus. And then after that, it was pretty much the, the teachers. You um, start going bonds with the teachers. The teachers were able to communicate with you really well and, you know, just answer questions once again. The questions, there's a lot of questions that students might have and to be able to have someone there to answer your questions is such, such a great deal and it's very good for you. And like I said, you get, you get a relationship with the teachers. Um, I can probably say Miss Susan Babita, she was my math teacher. In fact, I think she was my math teacher for the first, the first three semesters that I was here because I had to take a test and I had to start below the math. And that's another thing I do like. They have programs that will allow you to help you, help you with the math that you might have not have known or you might have forgotten. In my case, I have forgotten. So it helps you up and builds you up for the courses that you will need to possibly transfer to a college that you will really want to go to. Were there uh, any programs like this when you were preparing and thinking about college in high school? Were there programs like this that might have given you that support and, and, and allowed you to know what to expect? Or was it really when, once you got to Guilford that that happened? Well, like I said, I attended Southwest. Um, Guilford High School, and you know I was really blessed in the fact that I've had I had people kind of helping me there. I had counselors from school that was kind of telling me, "Well, you could take a two-year degree at GTCC." And at this point in time, I was like, "Well, I didn't know if I really wanted to attend a, a community college." I would at that point in time, I was coming out of high school. I said, "I want to go like the UNC." You know, you know, just having a young young mind, just wanting to go out to four-year college and not basically knowing that it takes steps. And I'm very fortunate that I did choose to come to GTCC, and it's kind of taught me how to be successful in life and in class. But as far as a program, I think the program was really beginning at that point in time. I said the program had al always been here with people helping, but to magnify it to another level, I, I agree totally. Great. Thank you, Thomas. Well, Brenda, going back to the, the data, where... Uh, it's probably early in, in this uh, in this work, but uh, where are are you seeing just significant gains in having these partnerships across the campus? And, and what would you recommend for your next steps? Well, I think that what we're looking at is we are going to continue definitely with the advocate uh, program. One of the things that we saw though is what we were not uh, as uh, able to engage the students in the advocacy program as we would have liked to. Mm -hmm. We really thought when we first started this that we were going to have a uh, problem engaging our faculty and our staff to be volunteers to help out with this program, but that wasn't an issue whatsoever. It was so gratifying to see the institution come together and to unite under the thought that a developmental student is everybody's student, and so we need to all be part of their success. Mm -hmm. But what we found, and I don't think this is atypical with a lot of students, but also with uh, the developmental students, is that this is one aspect of their lives. They also have jobs, uh, some of them have families, and so there are other things that are actually buying for the time. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the advocacy program into our ACA 118 class. And our ACA 118 class is a student success class. 
And we have a policy in place at Gilbert Tech that says that those students who have scored into a math of 70 and a reading or writing of 80, which is about a mid-level range of the development of coursework, must be enrolled in an ACA 118 course. So we're actually going to pair our advocates with our students in that environment and uh, there are going to be some assignments that are part of the ACA class that will make sure that we have established for all students that kind of a connection, that bond. And so it's just another piece of support. With regards to what we did find uh, from our fall data, we still do not have results back from our spring data. We're waiting, of course, for all of that uh, to be collected, and then we can analyze that. But what we did see is we did see an increase of uh, six percentage points for those students uh, with regards to persistence from the fall to the spring, that those who had had an advocate were persisting at that higher level rate. But we believe that pairing the advocacy program with the ACA 118 will also produce some greater gains for us. It will also allow us to touch more students. It's great to hear about uh... Uh, and I know there'll be other community colleges looking for ways to um, implement the, the, those supports along with developmental ed. So it's very important to hear that there's been this 6% um, rise already in persistence.